So hey, everyone. Thanks for showing up tonight on um, Thursday night, no less. Uh, my name is Ifu Anyameka, and I'm a software engineer from Chicago. Um, and today, I'll be talking to you uh, about PhysicsNet. I, I couldn't come up with a clever name for it, so that's what we're going to call it. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it concerns uh, training a model to be able to predict the motion of objects in a bounded environment. Um, so physics nerds, prepare yourselves. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so uh, from a pretty early age, um, human beings are able to do some pretty complex things, right? So within roughly a year of being born, um, you should have been able uh, to throw things. Um, you hopefully were also able <laughs> uh, to track falling objects uh, with uh, your eyes. Um, and within a year, uh, most children can pick up objects and uh, unfortunately put them directly uh, in their mouths. <laughs> um, except for this, this little thing. He's super smart and doesn't do that kind of thing. Um, so without being told um, at any point, you sort of gain, you gain the intuition um, that, say, for example, if you throw a ball into the air, it'll follow a roughly parabolic trajectory. Um, you also know that if you throw this ball uh, at a wall, or you know, back of a basketball board, uh, basketball board, whatever, I'm sports, not my thing. Um, <laughs> you know that it will it'll bounce off of that off of that wall. Um, so m the purpose of my project was to try to train a model to um, figure out how objects move in space without explicitly being given uh, concepts like force or momentum, um, just to like to get it from the same way that, that we get it, which is via observation. Um, of course, all of this is in service of eventually constructing a robot army, um, because you know they need to understand that uh, you have to aim where the target will be and not where it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, so to create the environments, uh, I used a JavaScript physics engine called Matter.js. Um, so you can kind of see from the way the circles are moving, this doesn't perfectly mimic um, the real world. Uh, all of these collisions are perfectly elastic. There is no spin, like, so there's no you know, angular momentum. Um, there's no error surface friction. So effectively, if you keep the recording going, the balls just sort of travel forever. So. This is um, a fairly elementary thing to do for uh, a human being, right? So on the far left, you'll see circles at time, uh, let's say, like t equals 0, right? That's position 1. Uh, the frame in the middle, that would be uh, time like t equals 1, um, uh, the, all, where the circles are in a different position. Um, in that last frame, you can see some vectors that are being drawn between uh, the initial position of the circles and their final position, right? So we kind of do this subconsciously. Um, and because we're able to do this so easily, we can guess the next position of, of each of these circles. Um, you see these, the, uh, the circles outlined in red are obviously like the, the, the final positions in the, in, the, in the third frame. And this is basically what I asked, um, I asked my model to do. I would give it two frames. Uh, with circles in uh, obviously different positions, and then I would have it guess what's the third frame. Where where will the uh, circle be at the next time step? Um, so the model wasn't given uh, uh, images exact, exactly like these. Uh, these are rectangles and you know a white space. It's actually given um, samples like this. Uh, they're somewhat pixelated. Um, the actual samples are 28 by 28 pixels. So <laughs> when you blow them up, they look like this. Um, but uh, that is actually enough information for the model to be able to uh, figure out um, what it needs to figure out. So uh, this is the uh, architecture um, of my model. It's a, it's a convolutional autoencoder. Um, so as you can see uh, at the top, um, with the encoder, I, what I did was I took two images um, and I essentially stacked them and I fed them through uh, several convolution layers. Um, and of, uh, at the end of that, you uh, see the decoder at the bottom. Um, the decoder is the portion of the network that actually uh, essentially like undo undoes the convolutions and reconstructs the image. So at the top, I give it two, uh, two of the, the initial images, and then at the bottom, it constructs that, that third image. 
So I'm going to give you a, a sort of a quick rundown of, of uh, what the model produced during training. Um, this is about 30,000 epochs, so I'm not going to go through everything, obviously. <laughs> um, but uh, to start with, it, it, it's not really producing much of anything, right? It's just a, a gray square. Um, after about uh, 2,000 epochs, it figures out that it should generate, um, should generate walls. But as you can see, the walls are not the right color. They're white. Um, and also, <laughs> there's nothing inside of the box. Uh, uh, after about 4,000 epochs, it actually has figured out the color of the, of the walls. They're gray, which is awesome, but still nothing. Then it starts producing smudges after about 6,000 epochs. You can see like in the middle, there's this purplish something going on. Um, <laughs> and in the uh, lower uh, left corner, there's something greenish. That's kind of what we're looking for. Um, over time, it gets more accurate. This is pretty close. I constructed an animation just to give you a better idea uh, of what it predicts. Um, so on the left is the target, um, and on the right is what the, uh, the network predicts. Uh, I constructed the um, animation on the right um, by taking the two input images that I gave the network and then concatenating its prediction on the, on, the, uh, on the end of that. So you can see it's pretty good with velocity, um, position specifically right after each uh, time step, uh, but the colors <laughs> are a little off, right? Like uh, the, the uh, circles are flickering. Um, so <laughs> there's some imperfections here <laughs> that can be fixed, um, but I was, I was pretty happy to see that you know, it can, it's, it's has an idea of where, uh, of where the circles should be. Um, so next steps, right? Um, the point is, is for a model that, that generalizes to uh, how the, the world works using not, uh, not too many samples, right? So um, one of the things I want to do is I w essentially want to add complications to this environment. Um, one would be to add uh, barriers or like walls inside of the, uh, the environment to see that it, uh, it understands that uh, gray wall means bounce off, right? Um, another thing I could do would be to change the environment's shape, um, which is another sort of generalization around uh, bouncing off walls. Um, adding friction, there was, there was no friction in, in the original uh, environment. Um, fixing the issue around the colors um, in, in the frames, keeping them stable. Um, and another thing I don't really mention here is uh, adjusting the frame rate. So uh, how I chose the frame rate was somewhat uh, arbitrary, um, but I don't know if that was a, an, an avoidable thing. Um, essentially, I wanted to uh, have a high enough frame rate um, that uh, if, a, if a circle bounced off a wall, it wouldn't be such that, for example, uh, you know, it, it's like uh, a little ways again from the wall uh, at time step one, and then like pretty far away from the wall at time step two. I wanted enough frames um, per second that I would, uh, I would, I would capture uh, it getting pretty close to the wall and, and, and uh, you know, eventually bouncing off. Um, so I'd like to see you know, um, what happens when I, when, I, uh, when I adjust the frame rates, either you know, higher or lower, um, just, like, just kind of see what happens. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot that I could do with this, um, and I'm really excited to you know, uh, experiment some more. If you want to uh, find me, um, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, uh, on Twitter at uh, iandyameka. Um, you can go to my personal site uh, at lifeisalgorithm.com, um, and you can find me uh, on GitHub. Uh, Larissa told me not to say Terminator. She called it the T word, so I, I see I didn't. Larissa, I didn't say it. I just put it. I didn't. Well, I did. Um, <laughs> uh, it's. We're fine. We're safe. Everything's good. Uh, so yeah, thanks for coming. Um, if you have any uh, questions, you can feel free to ask them now. Um, and if we don't get to them, you can ask me later, obviously. Um, any questions? <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I see that you, you're decoding the image, and then you're uh, sorry, you're encoding the image, and then you're decoding it straight to the next frame. Mm -hmm. Without adding some layers in the middle, do the computation and figure out that what the next frame should be and then decode it. So separate the encoding and decoding from the uh, reasoning. Because when you're doing collisions, sometimes that's very tricky to do. So maybe that's why you want to do it. Oh, um, 
So I'm not sure how to rephrase the question, but you're, you're sort of uh, theorizing that maybe um, additional computation would help uh, deal with like the color issue? Yeah, right. separate the decoding and coding from reasoning what the collisions uh, should be doing. We should talk later. Okay, we're gonna talk about this. I don't, yeah, I'll show you my code and you can fix it for me. Uh, <laughs> um, any, other, any other questions? I was kind of expecting that it was some blurring, but it would kind of flow out. Yeah. And it, it was, it stayed, they stayed connected all the way along it. Did you ever, you miss it too, just when you think it's to happen? Because you never trained it on seeing a blurry image. Hmm. So how does it know that blurry image is in this place? Oh, um, I'm not sure that it, it, it does. I, I, are, you, are you commenting on, uh, oh sorry, so the, the question was about how, uh, how the model dealt with the blurring, like the, the blurry pixels, no, like in the, the, the balls stay connected together. They yeah. Very nicely. Mm -hmm. and I, oh, I um, know. ML magic. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do anything like special to get that to happen. Um, it just like it. Oh, sorry. Um, that was off of what you just said. Because yeah. I noticed that in, you said it was a thirty thousand epoch knife. Oh, I see what you mean. That's your question. Okay. So yeah, your um, the, the question is around like how over time it figured out uh, that the balls are not like smeared um, and actually sort of brought them together into like a single um, like central like location. Um. Hmm. Not sure I know how to answer your question. Let's see. Oh. Well, well, yeah, we'll talk about it later, I guess. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming. Um, feel free to ask me more questions later.